Alright, the four-pronged plow in Dark Souls, one of the more obscure weapons that was introduced in the DLC, that a lot of people have never used or don't even know exists, given the low drop rate. And even if you manage to acquire it, it seems to be nothing more than a pretty unremarkable spear. However, it does have a unique little twist on the stagger penalty that a lot of weapons have when you miss your target. Most of which merely causes you to lose your balance, but with the plow it punishes you by, uh, well, by magically untying your shoelaces. It makes your character forget all about the loop-de-loop. -loop. Well, actually that's not entirely true, because as long as you don't miss your target, or if you hit a wall, you won't fall. However, what if we alter that a bit with a little modification that makes you fall flat on your face every single time you attack? Well, in that case, I suspect that instead of plowing through enemies, they will just end up telling you to go fork yourself. Now, be that as it may, it is actually a pretty damn powerful attack. Especially if you focus on leveling up dexterity, without telling anyone about it of course, and then you can even apply a resin or magic weapon to it. And uh, yeah, I don't know, that's a bit boring. So let's nerf it at least a little bit. By doing something that practically nobody ever would even think about. Let's upgrade only down the occult upgrade path. Which sounds completely arbitrary, but given that you first would have to upgrade it to divine, and then repeatedly fall upon your face until you're a deformed monstrosity, what better way to express yourself as a fallen angel than by wielding the devil's pitchfork? as occult is more or less the predecessor to dark damage. So there you go, not arbitrary at all. A bit convoluted, sure, but not arbitrary, I guess. Oh, and as an additional challenge, let's see if we can make it through the entire game without ever wearing any kind of armor. Because that's obviously not beneficial when an attack leaves you completely vulnerable. However, it does make sense to take your clothes off when trying to plow everyone and everything inside. I mean, if you're going to use a gardening tool, you might as well behave like one. You know what? Even though my character might not be able to wear an appropriate attire, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't. So, uh, hold on a second, and there we go. Back to my roots in a way, although we all know how much I actually despise farming. Regardless, I actually went through the trouble of purchasing a real life dairy cow. Shazoo! Unfortunately, because I declined that Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship, I had to import it from Eastern Europe. But at least it fits the theme of going directly from farm to fork. Although that might be a bit on the nose, but then again, even that is very theme appropriate. Well, even so, I may be a man of agriculture, but when you follow a strictly face plant based diet, you might end up eating a lot of dust instead. Regardless, falling your way through the lands of Lordran is sure to be uh, quite a trip. <laughs> Sit on down, now give the scoop, what's that? It's called the loop-de-loop, -loop. you gotta take lace in each hand You go over and under again, you make a loop-de-loop -loop and pull And the shoes are looking good You go over and back, left to right, loop-de-loop -loop and pull them tight Black bunny ears or Christmas bow, lace them up and you're ready to go You make a loop-de-loop -loop and pull, and the shoes are looking good You make a loop-de-loop -loop and pull, and the shoes are looking good Now, although Pyromancer is my reliable old plow horse when it comes to starting classes, that's not gonna work this time. So another unique twist, we're playing as the Wanderer, a class named after the fact that everyone is wondering why it even exists at all. However, it has enough dexterity to wield a pitchfork, and it even has 11 intelligence, which sounds superfluous, but it might in fact be beneficial given the route that we're taking. Now because we start with a weapon, we can immediately fight the Asylum Demon, and we can already notice how vulnerable we are after every single attack, especially when we deplete our entire stamina bar. Regardless, I understandably tend to fall for a pokeable butt, and this is a very pokeable one indeed. And it's also already noticeable that it is in fact a powerful attack. Probably because it consists of multiple hitboxes, although that doesn't really have to mean that much, if you remember uh, this video. Now, despite the boss being defeated, we still have to pay a visit to Oscar, since he magically has the key now. Somehow. And even if he didn't, he still has our Estus flask. Moreover, why wouldn't we go to him? I mean, he is our savior, the very person who provides us with a purpose, as we are to carry on his legacy. So, don't you worry, Oscar, I'm here to- Oh, whoa, whoa, damn it, my shoelaces! Uh, whoops. For Kalicious, I tripped by complete accident. And imagine how much worse it would have been if I actually was wearing shoes. 
That's not right. Ah, get it? Not right. No. Anyway, our path through the beginning of the game is almost the same as usual. But after collecting all the solar pops along the way, while making our way towards Andre, so that we can immediately upgrade to plus 5, because I clearly wasn't going to get much gardening done at plus 0. But the first boss on my list was actually not the gargles yet, but the moonlight butterfly. Given that we will need the divine amber first if we eventually want to go down the occult path. And speaking of the path we're going down, just like not wearing armor, I also intentionally left the wolf's ring behind. But you know, especially because I accidentally killed Oscar on purpose. I think everyone watching would want to see me suffer for my complete lack of decency. Of course if I had any I would be doing this run with a knife and fork. But speaking of suffering, fighting the moonlight butterfly this early might in fact imply that it would pose an actual threat this time. And unfortunately it doesn't start out as a caterpillar, so no matter how early you get here, it's not even a moonlight pupa, but already in its full grown butterfly state. However, despite being at plus 5 already, and despite falling face first into a butterfly, when it came to my damage output, I did not exactly fall with my nose in the butter. Oh, hold on. Wait, that's actually not an English expression. Oh, why does English have to be the international language? Okay, well I'll see it through the fingers this time. But the point is that I did so little damage, and only got 2 or 3 attacks in per cycle, that I had to survive multiple cycles of magic projectiles, and my shield doesn't exactly have high magic resistance. So I was constantly taking chip damage while getting next to no attack opportunities myself. In fact the fight was so lengthy that we even got to see an attack that's so rare that most people don't even know it exists. Fortunately it looks pretty easy to avoid. I, I, what the fork was that? Ok, uh, just like the average American this is not working out. Now fortunately the benefit of live streaming is that I'm not required to cultivate my own garden. And therefore I followed the advice of the chat to go and get the wooden shield. Because it's supposed to have high magic defense. And uh, uh, you would think it would be easy to acquire since it's among the early game enemies. But uh, you also think you wouldn't need multiple attempts on the moonlight butterfly. Or to go and get a specific item in order to defeat it. But eventually I did get the shield and it turned out that this piece of wood has less magic defense than the grass grass shield. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, chat. I love you guys. To be fair I guess I should have known since normally wood is what makes the magic happen. Therefore I decided that it might be a better idea to go and fight the gargoyles first. Especially if I made sure to acquire the fab ring first. In fact it was specifically relevant that I would acquire it by rescuing Lotrek from his cell myself. Even though he automatically frees himself after defeating the gargoyles. However then he wouldn't give you a sunlight medal as a token of gratitude. And that is an item that you can trade with Snuggly the Crow for a white titanite chunk. And that's obviously going to be helpful later on. And I would say that it was a reward well deserved. Since it wasn't exactly that easy to even make a dent into the trident tryhard. Mainly because of his overpowered maniacal minions. Who like always were the real threat here. And therefore I had to play things very carefully. Combined with a little bit of a lot of luck. But eventually I was able to claim my two prizes. And remember that a kick does no damage so it's allowed within the rules. In fact it's even theme appropriate in a run that's all about falling down. Moreover a good fab is a nice way to increase your endurance. Or at least will provide a refreshing boost of energy. And together with leveling up to 15 endurance. That meant I would still have stamina remaining each time I would trip over my own feet. So that would at least leave me a little bit less vulnerable. But of course despite all of that, if I could not correctly time and aim my attacks, because keep in mind that this attack has zero tracking, meaning that fighting two bosses at the same time could still turn into a colossal catastrophic calamity of uncontrollable clumsiness. Okay, let's kinda hit the till. Nice. Fork over your tail weapon that I cannot use. Yep. Oh, that's actually the wrong direction, but I still hit him. Ah, yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Uh oh. Whoa, 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 yeah, but there. No, no, not in the fire, not in the fire, not in the fire. Uh, ah, it's getting hot in here. And I've already taken off all my clothes.
Well, I'm getting some good RNG at least there that I they didn't just happen to attack me while, while I was on the ground there. Yeah, kill him, quick. Get out of the way, get out of the way, hey! Fuck me. Getting squashed. Now more, a tennis guy. Okay. How are these guys easier than the Moonlight Butterfly? Although I, although I died almost at multiple points in this fight, but still. You know what's ironic? It turned out that there was in fact a shield with very high magic resistance right next to Firelink Shrine. So together with having more health available, but of course still the same damage output, and therefore still required an immense amount of patience, but eventually, eventually, I could turn the butterfly into a butterflu. <sighs> God damn it, that's about time. So, fork over those souls and that amber, because we're still only at the beginning of the game after all. So that did make me a little anxious for the rest of the game. However, despite having the proper instrument for farming colored greens, I wasn't exactly in the mood for farming any green colored titanite shards. But fortunately, you can pick one up down in Lower Blighttown. And while we're here anyway, a specific green colored ring would be very beneficial to help the regeneration of my green colored bar. Moreover, we need to be here anyway to pick up titanite chunks. But remember that this time we need the white ones that you normally tend to pick up by accident, since you never actually need them. In fact, it turned out that the second one is all the way down where the curse frogs are. And although I did not actually get cursed, let me tell you that I did some cursing of my own due to the nature of platforming in Souls games. Yeah, you would think that Elden Ring would be an improvement, but uh, then of course they had to include the parkour session before the Frenzy Flame. That's better. Finally. Hey, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, but that, that, that. Oh. Oh my god, this is annoying. <laughs> platforming in Souls games, always fun. Okay, reinforce. Alright, we're at plus three already. Now I have a divine plow, yeah. Hey, Lucas, when I'm plowing someone, it's divine. You know, because it's a miracle if it happens. Regardless, even though I suppose it's only appropriate that these leeches suck, you know, in reference to having to farm them, However, it still didn't take long at all until I got the necessary upgrade materials. Given that they drop 5 green titanite at a time. And therefore, with a plus 10 divine pitchfork, I was ready to put the power of almighty agriculture up against the devil's defense of an arch demonic arachnid. And uh, holy fork, that's not a lot of damage. Well, actually it wasn't as bad as it initially seemed. Because again, this attack consists of multiple hitboxes, just like the park charts. Moreover, because it's a frost attack, we can get bonus counter damage. And yes, that's finally the actual appropriate use of the term counter damage. Well, other than the fear of accidentally diving headfirst into the lava, the only attack that worried me was our AoE explosion, that I would not be able to avoid in time after face planting right beneath her. So I chose to play things a bit safer than usual, and I mainly went after her legs while not aiming directly towards her body in order to prevent getting stuck underneath her. But fortunately, like the majority of Dark Souls 1 bosses, her attacks are actually rather slow. In fact, her third sword attack has quite a bit of delay. But I suppose that makes sense given that spiders are infamous for having a lot of lag. And even though the witch attached to the spider, despite having lost half her body, is at least still 50% lag in name only, depending on pronunciation of course. I even wonder if I could have used the falling animation of my attack to essentially dodge underneath her stab attack. Because when you think about it, how beneficial would it be if I could turn my clumsiness into a tactical maneuver with strategic benefit? But eventually, and somewhat ironically I suppose, Quilak fell and I raked in a very nice amount of souls. In fact, we could farm a lot more because let's say that her brother maybe overdid it with his falling animation. But in all honesty, I shouldn't be laughing because just like Ceaseless, I myself might end up charging off a cliff, given that the Iron Golem would be up next. And uh... Well, it wouldn't be the first time that something along those lines uh, occurred. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, another problem would be having to deal with ONS afterwards without a fully upgraded weapon. As you might already expect what I'm going to do given the gimmicks of Divine and Occult Infusions. Because I chose to upgrade to Occult, not at the first opportunity I had, but I purposely waited until after the fight against Nido. So perhaps I would be better off to not go to Sand's Fortress yet, but instead make a quick trip into the catacombs for the Rite of Kindling. Although it has happened before that... Oh, oh that's nice. That's not, that's a lot better than uh, the party chats only. Oh, fuck. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. Okay, maybe I spoke a little too soon. Holy crap, holy crap, I'm getting flamethrower to death here. Where's the real one? That's the real one. Quick, kill him! <laughs> I wonder, what the fuck? I can't even see myself. Quick, attack! No, not in the corner! What the fuck? Kill him! Yeah. Oh my god. Well, it was def it was not so bad as the, as the party chats only run, but still, I almost died multiple times here. <laughs> oh my god. That was a bit clumsy, but that's what this entire playthrough is about. <laughs> hey, Mask of the Mother. Now, okay, <laughs> if I wear that, then I'm a mother forker. Get it? Um, yeah. Oh, ooh. Hey, hello. Hey, don't block my way. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I couldn't even push him away with uh, my stupid uh, falling animation. Oh, and now he fell. He fell better than I. Meh. What else did I... Oh! Ah, fuck! Nah. Crap, delicious. I wasn't paying attention. Ow! I don't like this snake. Here, die. Oh, he's not... He's, he's not that! Uh, no, no! What the fuck? What the fuck? Sense fortress. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should block, yeah. Okay, that's better. Lol. I mean, he's mainly resistant to physical damage, not to uh, elemental. Oh, it's pretty decent. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's a problem. If I'm on the ground, I'm completely vulnerable. However, if I can knock him over the edge... And not plow myself over the edge, then that should work. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay. That was enough time. Ow. Pfft. Oh, that was close. Oh, will that make him fall off? I don't know, but... Nah, probably not. He will probably not fall off, but hey. At least I can get enough damage in if I can knock him down. Yeah, okay. He almost fell off. Oh, That's not helpful. Come on. Okay, just in this groin. Just plow. If you're going to do some plowing, you have to be in the groin area, after all. Okay, that was not that much extra damage, but still. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Alicious. Oh, ah, ah, oh, 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 that was close. Ah, fuck, no. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was safe on the ground for that attack. Oh, he's still alive. Kill him. No, he's still alive. Oh, good thing that he did that attack. And not 
the, the grab. Okay, get it. Now, now I have him. Now I have him. Nice. Four delicious. Yeah. <laughs> That's better. Wait a minute. He's a construct of iron which uses an axe. He's the tin man from the Wizard of Oz. Has to be a joke somewhere with pitchforks and a straw guy. Well, <laughs> the funny thing is in the classic uh, uh, Wizard of Oz uh, movie, the scarecrow had a gun. I don't know why. Well, then again, he didn't have any brains, so... And having no brains, but having a gun, does work well together. I mean, at least that is what people in the United States have uh, definit definitively uh, demonstrated. So, there you go. Oh, by the way, uh, do you know what uh, the Wizard of Oz's favorite drink is? Dorothy. Let's uh, get the bonfire down there a bit. Uh, Gwendolyn, maybe I will include Gwendolyn, I don't know. Oh, whoa, hold, what the fuck? Wait, he doesn't... If you sit at a bonfire, he doesn't actually uh, move back to his position? Ah, oh, that's weird. You see, I sit at a bonfire, but he's still active. That's kind of... You can't escape me! Mm. I'll chase you to the What the fuck? The I was at the bomb. What the fuck? I. He attacked. What? I didn't do anything. I was just drinking my raspberry wine and eat. What the hell, dude? Well, there you go. You're never done learning in a Souls game. Because I did not know that. In a 12 year old game. Now, at this point, we could have gone into the Painted World to collect the Dark Amber and then backtrack through Sans Fortress, all the way back to Andre. But here's the problem with that. We need to keep it divine until after Nido, because of his respawning skeletons. After all, without armor, we're not going to tank our way through that fight. However, this implies that our weapon is rather weak by comparison for a fight like against Forkstein and Plow. Not to mention that we don't even have the benefit of occult damage against one of the very few enemies in the entire game who is actually weak to occult in the first place. On top of that, if I want the benefit of the Leo ring, Smo has to go down first, and that's something I almost never do. Although, appropriately, the last time was the pie charts only run. But of course, if you've seen that one, uh, you know how, uh, how poorly that one went. And you know what makes it even worse? The Leo ring only boosts physical damage, meaning that it will only provide around a 10% damage increase. Because with Occult Fusion, you mainly do magic damage. But, trust me, once we get to the DLC, that little bit of extra damage is going to be a very welcome addition. Uh oh. Yeah! And now attack. Oh fuck, Ornstein. Oh, Ornstein missed me. The butt slam is actually now a good attack opportunity uh, in the first phase because he doesn't have the lightning. <laughs> yeah, my priority is all forked up. I guess that's that's true in that context. Uh oh, I have to heal first. Just to be safe. Okay, quickly kill him. Nice, okay. That's a, that's a pretty good... Oh, he, did that count as a damage? Because I, he did hit me, but I didn't see my life bar move. So I wonder if I now start off with taking damage. Oh yeah, I do. Whoa, whoa. What the fuck is that charge? What the hell? Well, nice start. Damn it. I wanted to say nice roll catch, but it's more a fall catch. <laughs> Oh, at least I avoided the grab attack. Okay, got pretty lucky there. Oh, I couldn't avoid that one. Fuck! Whoa, good thing that I was just in time to heal. No! Uh, 
of other damage. Quick deal. Ooh, that, wow, that was luck. Otherwise, I would have immediately had to heal again. Oh, fuck. Ah, no. Shit. Ah, oh, delayed. Well, it's a good thing I went to pinwheel first. <laughs> Snake, what do you have in your hand? A fork. Why? A fork? What'd you do with your knife? It ain't dinner time yet. Sigint, you have to think bigger than that. A fork's good for more than just eating dinner. Oh yeah? Like what? It's a weapon. A weapon? Yeah, I can use it with the weapon button the same way I use the survival knife. Of course, it's not going to be much use for CQC. This mission is all about procuring on site. I have to use whatever limited equipment I can find, any way I can, to achieve my objective. So I have to make the most out of every item by adapting them to different situations. Take this fork, for instance. At first glance, it looks useless, but it can be an effective weapon if used the right way. You have to learn to think flexibly and see all the different possibilities. And the best part is, if I use this to spear a snack, I can eat it right there without having to put it in my backpack first. I knew it. You are using it to eat. Come on, just one good hit. K kill it, please. No. Oh, wait, he's yeah, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Ah, but ah, ba ah, on the final hit. Oh, yeah. Ah. All right. And there we have it, the Leo ring. And to reiterate, we don't get the optimal benefit out of it since we mainly inflict magic damage. But given the massive amount of magic resistance that several upcoming bosses have, especially the DLC ones, it may only be a small upgrade to our damage output, but it's certainly still a helpful way to boost my plowing. And speaking of things I would like to plow with, now the luscious lady Guinevere would hand us the Lord Vessel. Really? Lois, Lois, lo 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 honey, let's uh, make sure we do this delicately, alright? Our son would like to plow you. Which, under normal circumstances, would imply a fork in the road with multiple directions to choose from. But this time I knew exactly where to go first. After all, the whole reason for not upgrading to our cult yet was to keep Nido's little cartilage compadres from respawning, given that without armor I would not be able to just tank my way through. And I wasn't exactly willing to sacrifice the fab ring for the ring of fog and the slumbering dragoncrest ring strategy. However, not only did I not have any armor, I also didn't have any purple blooming moss to cure toxic, which I only realized after I fell headfirst into Nido's toxic inflicting sword. And despite the fact that I fall forward rather than on my ass, I did fall multiple times within reach of Nido's my ass ma. However, even with all of that going on, I could still get through this fight without much effort at all, which I guess goes to show that as long as you can take care of Nido's little marrow minions and don't go near the big bone bros in the back, the very lord of the dead is not much of a threat at all. Which in all honesty is kind of a disappointment if you ask me. In fact, we all know that the ultimate spooky scary skeletons are the bone wheels in the painted world. And we would have to face them given that that's where the key... Uh, oh god damn it, I forgot to pick up the doll first. <sighs> oh well, back with my ass to the asylum. And even though I might have acted like a total ass towards a certain someone... I'm sure that uh, Oscar is not the type of guy who holds uh, grudges. Hey, what the hell? Why is Oscar here? The fuck? Why is he here? Is it because I opened up the shortcut and he got aggroed somehow? That's weird. I've never seen that happen before. Wait, is he also one of those enemies that don't reset when you sit at a bonfire? What? Hold on, I want to test it out. Yeah, you see? It's the same thing as with the gargoyle. <laughs> but for some reason he's stuck against the door now. That's kind of weird. Oh, th there he is. See? Same thing as with the gargoyle. Now I'm curious. Let's see if we can actually guide him into the stray demon fight. Let's see what happens then. Can hey, Oscar can damage... Hey, this is interesting. Oscar, attack please. Yes. Can Oscar attack the, the stray demon? If you can attack regular hollows, why not? Okay, Oscar, defeat the boss for me. Oh, 
Oh, he didn't hit the straight demon, wait. Oh! <laughs> the straight demon killed him! Oh, okay. But that would, uh, that would have been an interesting strat. Holy crap, I really insulted uh, Oscar on this one. First I killed him accidentally on purpose. And now I made him uh, die by having a demon butt in his face. <laughs> and fight tonight slap that we don't need. We need the other one that we already, already have. But at least got a lot of souls from that. Oh, and I also have the crash shield now. So <laughs> that's good. Would be helpful against the four kings after all. Okay, so with that little detour done... As I was saying, in order to reach the key that leads to the Dark Amber, which in turn allows us to turn our godly garden tool into the Devil's Pitchfork, we will need to survive the tunnels that are filled with the terrible Tonys of the wheel variety. And I was especially afraid of them, given that I didn't even know where this key was located in the first place. But perhaps that's a good thing, because I have heard from a reliable source that fear is the path to the dark side of the fork. Oh, and even though we are in the painted world, I am going to be knife to Priscilla, because even though I would love to spoon with her, I'm not going to fork her on camera. At least not on this particular website. But now the time had finally come to upgrade our weapon to max down the occult upgrade path. Well, at least I could have done that if I had enough white titanite chunks. So if I would want to make my pitch fork pitch dark, I would have to submerge myself in darkness once again. And no, I'm not even referring to the Tomb of the Giants but to uh, some other very dark moments uh, engaging with those annoying bone wheel skeletons. But now I would be able to get my final upgrade. Well, I would have if I actually remembered to, uh, you know, use the materials I just gathered. I honestly forgot to upgrade. Regardless, I probably still would have defeated Gwendolyn first try if I wasn't looking at the stream chat at the obvious wrong moment. Wow. Yeah, maybe my next challenge run should be, can I beat Dark Souls with the attention span of a goldfish? Pretty much any playthrough I do is like that, apparently. But the reason I went to Gwendolyn at all is because this is one of the very few bosses in the entire game that is weak to a cult. But it also goes to show how irrelevant that is. He's still quite resistant to magic, which is our main damage type. But even without taking that into account, you would still inflict more damage with a regular upgrade path. Especially with an additional buff on top of that. Occult weapons cannot be buffed after all. And the only other boss that is weak to occult is Gwyn. But that is at the very end of the playthrough. And before we get there, there are several upcoming bosses that are very resistant to magic damage. So therefore I decided to go to Isolef before making my way to Sieve. Which in all honesty was pretty uneventful by now. Fire stage was no problem at all. And the centipede demon was a little more tricky since I had to manually aim for his legs. And I would have to make sure that I would not end up in front of him because of his jumping fireball and grab attack. But still it was a pretty easy fight regardless. And well, even after all these years, the bed of chaos can still go and fork itself. But by now, on top of having a fully upgraded weapon, we were also at a very decent level. Which made me confident enough to take on the magic resistant parts of the game. However, that apparently even applied to the armored tusks who are guarding the path towards the duke's archives. Because I honestly expected them to be weak to magic. However, I quickly realized that I put too much pork on my fork. But not to worry though, these little bacon buddies have a softer side as well. But after giving these standard loins a little prick, I was girding up my own for the upcoming fight. So to be clear, I was girding up my own loins, not my little... Uh, Break. But uh, actually it turned out that this would not be the dragon in this playthrough that would leave me seething, ironically. Because Sieve's magic defenses tip the scale less in his favor than you would expect. So not only was the damage at least somewhat okay, he has so little variety in his moveset that it's just a matter of baiting him into a loop of crystal breath attacks that allowed me a safe attack opportunity each time. All I needed to do was to make sure that I would have enough space available to outrun this big explosion. However, the DLC bosses would be a very different story, as they are much more aggressive and have much smaller windows for not only attack opportunities, but also healing opportunities, when I inevitably take damage while lying helplessly face down on the ground. Or, remember what I said much earlier in the video, perhaps that could actually be used to avoid specific attacks. Well, speaking of specific attacks, as you might know, I tend to bait out the Sanctuary Guardian's wind attack, because even if you get hit by it, 
you can still avoid the inevitable headbutt follow-up, which then allows for a free attack opportunity, even a tail cut if you so desire. However, I don't know what the fork was going on this time, but he just refused to do that move. Or actually even worse, he would do it, but only when I needed to heal instead. So therefore I had to improvise a little bit. Now fortunately, even though it feels like ages ago by now, I still remember fighting him at max NG on SO1 using only Assessors, which required me to make use of a lot more attack windows, since that fight would already take forever even when getting consistent damage in. Now at least this time my damage output was actually quite decent, however this boss, compared to the other DLC bosses, has a much smaller health pool, probably to make up for the fact that he has an electricity conducting one, and his magic resistance is lower as well. So given that this fight already took quite a while, that made me quite worried about Artorius. And he may be one of the Lords of Lordran, but he's not weak to a cult, probably because he is corrupted by darkness itself by now. Okay, when the hell can I attack him? Does this work? Okay, yeah, it worked because he simply didn't counterattack. It's not that he couldn't counterattack. Oh, that went completely over my head. Okay, that's good. But then I really have to make sure that I immediately attack when he does that. Otherwise, I am already no longer on the ground. Okay, that also works. Uh-oh, he's going to buff. Nah, that's... I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Otherwise, I will just get caught in the explosion. Oh, whoa, whoa. He has more reach than I thought. No! No! Fuck! Artorius doesn't really like, uh, like it when you heal. He will very easily punish you for that. Why is his arm droopy? Because he broke his arm. He's actually left-handed. So just imagine what uh, Artorius would be like in his prime. You see, if the, you time that correctly, you're still on the ground when he does that twirl attack. Oh fuck, that was not good. That doesn't work. Fuck it, I want to know if I can stagger him out of it. No. Fuck. So that's definitely not a possibility. Damn it, I want to heal first. And Taurus doesn't really give you that many uh, save attack, uh, save healing opportunities after all. Okay. So it's it is interesting that uh, uh, the falling animation actually has a tactical purpose as well. <laughs> nice hitbox pour in there. Oh fuck! You're right. I have the serpent ring equipped. I should have had the Leo ring equipped. Well, if he buffs again, I can change that. Only for the last part, but hey, it's still uh, stump something. Boo! Fuck! No, not good! No! Ugh. Fuck! Uh oh! Wow. Wow. <laughs> I really thought I would d uh, die there. Oh fuck. Oh fuck! I dodged backwards, what the hell? That was really dumb. Yeah! Whoa! Got some close moments, but that definitely w uh, went a lot better than I expected. The falling down animation had some really uh, helpful benefits here. <laughs> definitely a lot easier than the pie charts only run. Uh, remember how uh, 
terrible Artorias was on that playthrough. <laughs> Dude, did cover this kills you more than the Taurus. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Now that's a boss that you call daddy. Of the Abyss, specifically. Okay, so how's the damage going to be? That's not as bad as I thought. That's actually quite doable. Uh oh. No, I'm against the wall! I'm against the wall! Oh. Completely wombo combo to death. I mean, it's not going that quickly, but so far it's going well as l at least. Oh, f ah! I was too late! Damn it! Caught me off guard, I was too late. Shit! It went so well. Ah, uh, fuck it, I'll just be make sure that I'm at full health. What the hell, I missed! Oh no! I did not expect that. Shh. Fuck. Damn it, what am I even supposed to do if this, something like that happens? I mean, I'm on the ground without stamina <laughs> and then I'm getting decimated by that spell. Shit. Getting some bad RNG now when it comes to attack opportunities. This was my first attack opportunity in like a minute or whatever. And now, and not even a safe one. Woo, that was just in time. Uh-oh, no, no stamina. Oh! I avoided it just by walking. <laughs> and that was not even uh, intentional, and that was also not intentional, obviously. Uh-oh, now I do need the silver pendant here. And fuck, no, this is not good. I need a healing opportunity. I don't remember the this fight on the pike charts only run that well. But I think that's because this fight wasn't that bad with the pike charts. So I think this is actually contrary to Artorias. This is actually a bit more tricky than, uh, than the pike charts run. But we're getting close. So if I don't fuck up now. Which is a big if unfortunately. Fuck! Okay, good. Only one more attack. Kill! Yes! Fork this guy! <laughs> Alright! Yeah, that was a bit tricky, but we managed to get through it. Hey, who's this? Guess I should put this on my only fans, but uh, I think uh, we need to uh, fork... Uh... Oh. It's just like in real life. You want to fork, but you can't. Yeah, like usual, I'll just have to put my hands to the plow. As in, getting to work on defeating the final boss for the DLC. However, despite the previous fights going relatively well, but fighting Calamite with face plants is certainly no small potatoes, I even accidentally did an actual jump attack. So, given that that was against the rules, I had to let myself get killed. Yeah, so then I definitely felt like I had egg on my face. However, that turned out to be an excellent way of getting that yoke off my shoulders, because with the 11 intelligence I started with, Eddie Eggboy would give me a pyromancy flame, allowing me to make use of power within. So as long as I would keep my eyes peeled, hopefully that would prevent me from going bananas. However, even though power within is a really good damage buff, but given how much time Calamite spends up in the air, or moving away from you, the buff already wore off before I could get a decent amount of damage in. On top of that, despite this being one hell of a huge arena, it is actually quite narrow near the back and when Calamite charges away from you, when close to a wall, that massively messes with his already massive hitboxes. In fact, uh, speaking of uh, massive hitboxes... Oh whoa! What the fuck?! No! 
Does it linger that fucking long? That is fucking stupid. Come on. It lingers that long? Come on. So in this fight, it wasn't the fall with my fork that would help me to prevent taking damage. It was the fall of the water variety that helped me out. Now, of course, not the actual waterfall itself, but the point is that the arena is much less narrow there. So if you lure Calamy towards the waterfall first, you don't have the issue of him turning around too early when dashing away, or him flat out flattening you by not even having enough room in the first place to dash away from you. So that at least resolved one issue, but because of Calamy's massive defenses, and I was still getting only very few safe attack opportunities, that implied that the fight would inevitably drag on. And not only does that in turn imply that your healing reserves drain away slowly but steadily, but you also start to make mistakes. Yeah, dying at this point would be a real smack in the face. And as you might expect, my face couldn't really take much more abuse at this point. Oh, what, ah, what the hell? How did that hit me? What? Oh, what the, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? That, uh, that didn't look right. That did not look right. Quick, hit the, the Dragon Balls. <laughs> and not necessarily the Z variety. Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did it hit me? I just moved to the side. What the fuck? Son of a biscuit. Oh, that's also... What the hell is happening? Just kill him. What the hell? He's still alive. No, what the fuck? What the fuck is happening? Just poke the ball, plow the balls, and fuck! Oh my god! <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that, that was a total shit show. Yeah, Calamite was holding on for their life, absolutely. Fuck me. Well, given that Sif was still alive in the main game, we had the ability this time to get the alternative cutscene after saving Little Sif in the past. Kind of ironic by the way that in order to save man's best friend, you will literally have to wipe out all of humanity around him. Bleep, bleep. No, I was not talking to you Presbytenu. In fact, go and set up the gramophone player, because the only way to make the fight against Sif tolerable, especially after he cries like a wolf to the moon, when he realizes he has to fight his brave yet exceptionally clumsy savior, is by having the loop de loop song in the background on how to tie your shoelaces. Otherwise I fear I would be taking too much hay on my fork. And given that I assume that's yet another example of a dungeness expression, let's go and use the Dutch version of that song. Wil je weten hoe je schoenen steekt? Zal je zeggen hoe je dat vliegt? Kijk maar goed, want het is geen klus. Wat is dat? Dat heet de lus aan lus. Je pakt een veter in elke hand. Je gaat over en onder zijn door. Je doet de lus aan lus gaan dan. En de schoen zit echt vast voor. Je gaat heen en weer, opzij en opzij. Lus aan lus en je trekt erbij. Is het een konijn of is het een kerstcadeau? Maak ze vast en je springt naar de klo. Maak de lus aan lus in dat vast. Want de schoen die zit nu vast. Maak de lus aan lus in dat vast. Want de schoen die zit nu vast. Ja, yeah, really? Ingrid can go to Farlink? I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that. This game is, is that old and I didn't even know uh, that. Well, you never done learning in a Souls game, right? Oh, at least you see it. Curse isn't active anymore because that prevents you from using uh, power then. Hmm, maybe I should actually have equipped the crash shield. Okay, that's not so bad. Oh, yeah, the crash shield could have been very useful here. So, I already get massive... Oh, fuck. I already have massive... Uh-oh, I can't do it in time. Fuck. Damn, that's the second king all. Uh-oh. 
Okay, that's not going so well. <laughs> My damage output is pretty good, but I can't really attack that often. Fuck. Or hit my target. So yeah, the damage output is pretty good. The damage opportunities are less. Uh oh, no. And of course, having to deal with multiple kings at the same time when not wearing any armor is not a good thing. Oh, fuck! Getting lasered from off screen. No, oh, why did I hit? I missed twice. Maybe I shouldn't lock on. That that would uh, probably help a lot. At least I'm getting pretty lucky so far with the off screen attacks. I was hoping that would go over my head, but... Oh, fuck! Damn it! Why did that not hit? Not hit. Uh oh. I couldn't switch in time. Okay, just go for it. No! Go for it! Attack! No! No! No, quick! Heal, 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 heal! Yeah! <laughs> Alright! Well, first try. Without armor. That was not... Uh, that was not what I expected. It was very clumsy, but still. My damage output was... Very good. You see, and that's the whole reason why I did not go with regular standard upgrades. I would have been way too overpowered. <laughs> my character looks more purple <laughs> than anything, but yeah, whatever. Okay, let's see if parrying actually helps. Well, it did hit, but... Uh... <laughs> Wait, so let's move back. Yeah, that kind. Yeah, still not great. Damage is not bad, at least. Ooh. One more time. Oh, right. damn it. Oh, whoa, fuck. No! No! What the hell? I could move! Now, what the hell was that? Man? I suddenly couldn't move. Well, that was <laughs> no. <laughs> that was almost a very con uh, convincing first uh, attempt, and then suddenly I couldn't move. Well, it does happen a lot to me, by the way, that uh, I die when the when a boss only has like 10 HP left or whatever it is. Oh, ooh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Ah, that's not good. Hey, come on.
Okay, let's just heal uh, instead. Oh, whoa! He actually grabbed me from... <laughs> from on the ground. Whoa, whoa, that's... Huh? They didn't do damage, but, like, it did hit me in some way? What? That was weird. Oh, hmm. Huh? Okay. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Crapalacious! Okay, let's uh, heal. Again, just heal. Oh, I got him! <laughs> All right, <laughs> little anticlimactic ending, I sup uh, I, su I would say. But <laughs> this one it is. <laughs> yeah, Moonlight Butterfly was the hardest boss of the run. Well, no, actually, Calamite was. But there we go, and we did a, hey, and we did the entire playthrough, including the four kings and Gwyn, in our underwear. All right, but there we are. Stick a fork in it. We're done. Bless thy safe return. Let Karth and Frant serve your highness. We are here to serve your highness. Let the true God be cast upon the world. Our Lord hath returned us 